Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Tesla might sign up franchise dealers. Toyota tweaks the Camry and Sebastian Vettel is going to make whopping big bucks. But now let's get to the news because as I noted in yesterday's show, I interviewed Elon Musk at an industry conference on Saturday and here's one of the other nuggets that came out of that fireside chat. When I asked him if he could really scale up his retail model of company stores in all 50 states in the U.S. and asked how they would handle maintenance and repairs, Musk admitted that relying exclusively on company stores probably was not enough. And I quote here, we may need a hybrid system, Musk said, with a combination of our own stores and some dealer franchises. I'm sure that franchise dealers are going to feel vindicated that their system is superior. By the way, in an upcoming episode of AutoLine this week, we will have Forrest McConnell, the chairman of the National Auto Dealer Association, and he's got a lot to say about Tesla's company stores. It was three years ago when Toyota gave us the latest generation Camry, so that means it's time for the usual mid-cycle refresh, right? Well, is it a refresh when you pretty much change everything on the outside of the car except for the roof? Is it a refresh when you give the car an all-new center stack along with soft touch materials throughout? And finally, would you call adding 2,000 brand new parts to a car that's already selling over 400,000 units in America a refresh? Well, Toyota does and says most of those changes to the 2015 model are thanks to the research it did with Camry customers. The majority said they were happy with the safety and reliability of the car, but thought it could be improved elsewhere, and Toyota was listening. One area they, they told us we had an opportunity to improve was on exterior styling and the uh, elevation of the interior appointment. And so that was the focus area for this uh, mid-cycle change. You know, one of the things I'll add to that, us along with most of the manufacturers, periodically change the product mid-cycle. But that's usually very, very limited to color palettes, wheels, fabrics, not the kind of design changes that you see with this car. To our knowledge, this is the most any manufacturer has ever devoted to a mid-cycle change in the business. And that really goes to show how committed we are to making sure that Camry continues to um, satisfy our customers and how important it is to our brand. If you want to see that customer-driven Camry up close, it's in dealerships right now and we're going to have a more in-depth look at the car on a future episode of AutoLine Daily. And talking about Toyota, the company just announced it sold 7 million hybrids globally, including Lexus. That's a very impressive number, but remember, it took 17 years to hit that mark. Not surprisingly, the Prius accounts for nearly half of those sales. Toyota currently sells 27 different hybrid models globally and will introduce 15 more. But as we have reported all year long, hybrid sales in the United States are falling. And that leads us to our next story. Because those hybrid sales are softening, Hyundai is considering offering diesels in the U.S. again. It had considered them a few years ago, but backed away mainly for cost considerations. But now Hyundai says it does see value in diesels, but the key is going to be finding the right vehicle to drop it in. Oh, wipe those tears away, LeBron. Pull out your hanky, Kobe. Move aside, Tiger. As much as those guys earn in a year, they are not even close to what Formula One driver Sebastian Vettel is reportedly going to get for moving to Ferrari. Forbes is reporting that Seb signed a contract worth 80 million smackaroos a year. And that does not even include sponsorship deals that could push the number much higher. Forbes says Vettel is now the highest salary athlete in the world. Hey, coming up next, time for You Said It. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. And now it's time for some of your feedback. 
SeaTech saw our report that one of the richest men in the world wants to buy up a dealership group, but he wonders, if dealers make such slim profits, why would Warren Buffett want to buy the Van Tile Group? High return on investment. My prediction is Berkshire Hathaway Automotive will be buying more dealers in the future. Look out AutoNation and Sonic. Ooh, very interesting viewpoint, SeaTech. Maybe all the dealership consolidation that we've seen so far is only a drop in the bucket. And maybe there's going to be a whole lot more to come. You know, I had not thought about that possibility, so thanks for sharing it. HTG wants to know, why isn't Tesla fighting the dealers at the federal level? It's hard to believe Musk hasn't had lawyers look at this route. Going state by state takes so long and must be expensive. Well, HTG, he's doing it that way because that's the only way you can do it. There is no federal protection for dealer franchisees. Each and every one of the 50 states in the United States have written their own franchise laws. The NADA did this deliberately over 60 years ago so that dealers would have local political support in every single state. Don from Naples heard about the ALG survey, which says that car buyer's perception of Kia is not very good. So he wants to know, if Kia were doing so badly based on consumer perceptions as indicated in this article, then how is it that Kia sales have skyrocketed during the past three model years? Well, obviously they're being bought by people who don't have a bad perception of Kia. And Helicopter J saw our report on the hydraulic hybrid that Peugeot showed at the Paris Auto Show, but wants to know, John, I love the idea of the hydraulic hybrid system, but where is it to date? I have seen only one UPS truck with hydraulic hybrid printed on it. Yeah, you're right. They're pretty slow in coming. But my friends at General Motors say, check out a company called Lightning Hybrids. The GM truck guys seem to like what they see there. Hey, as always, we really like reading your comments and questions, so keep them coming. And don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours. We'll have Matt Hargett, the chief engineer on the Acura TLX, He'll have the car with him in the studio, so you're not going to want to miss it. I think the TLX represents a turning point for the Acura brand. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.